Hey guys, um, just testing. Can can everyone hear me clearly? Uh, okay, cool, cool. Just pulling up my the chat. No other questions. Hey man, hey hey Diana, Di Diana, Diana. Right. Okay, cool. You can you can hear me. Is it as clear as last time? Right. Um, because apparently my mic is not working. Right. So I'm using the webcam mic, which is supposed to be pretty good too. Right. So you can hear me loud and clear. That's good. That's good. Right. <laughs> I mean, these kind of things always happen, right? It's like, uh, it's like you know, your is Murphy's law. What can go wrong will go wrong, right? You know, you just prepare everything, and then out of nowhere, <laughs> I don't see my mic, my microphone under one of the choices here. So, um, we have to do with this microphone today. But I hope that the sound is loud and clear for you guys, right? Um, hey, Alan. Hey, Bob. Moses, Neil, Mark, um, Rita, Gustavo, nice to see you guys. Thanks for tuning in nice and early, right? Um, today's session, yeah, today's session is on Renko charts, right? I'll, I'm just covering the uh, the quick introduction to it. I'm going to give my own um, perspective on it, right? Before I, pa I pass the time on to Annabelle, we'll take you through the the calculations, you know, kind of how um, more in depth explanation of how what Renko charts are right how and some of the ideas are how it can be used right um i'm just checking if you guys if if any of you guys over here have any experience um using Renko charts or have used Renko charts in your trading right please send it in the in this question section right and i'll take a look at them uh, and while you guys are doing that i i do need to point you guys to a couple of key places right for those of you guys who are here for the first time right as a do see a few of you guys, a uh, few new names over here, right? Um, yeah, I see a few new names over here. Let me point you guys to a few places, all right? Kanemba, nice to see you. Okay, uh, hey, Syed. Hope London's fine, right? Uh, okay, many years ago, limited experience, right? All right, all right. So let me pull this out. Let me pull this out, right? Um, the first first place that I kind of want to send you guys to, right, is here. For those of you guys who are here for the first time. Hi there. I'm... Sorry. <laughs> Scared me. Uh, okay, those of you guys who are here for the first time, uh, trading analysis, right? So uh, not, not trading analysis, right? Sorry, it's the IC Markets webinars, right? So it's, it's updated pretty well. So last week, as you can see over here, right, last week, um, Annabelle, right, covered uh, on Haiken Aishi, know your charts. It's uploaded here already, so go check it out, right? Um, Haiken Aishi, for those of you guys who didn't, who missed the webinar, right? Uh, yeah, it's a lot more to do with, um, it's a lot more to do with uh, different interpretation of candlesticks, right? Factoring, factoring in um, how Haiken Aishi can actually help you um, determine like the momentum, strength of certain trends, right? And how you can combine it in different indicators, right? There have been requests for us to look into Renko charts, right? So today we're looking at Renko charts. Um, my personal take on Renko charts is that, yeah, we never used Renko charts to trade before. Been digging a lot deeper into, into how it is calculated. Pretty interesting, right? I do see that there are some use cases for it, all right? There's some use cases where Renko charts is really, really not bad, right? Um, and just a myth, um, at, at its core, Right, what Renko charts really does is that it helps you try to, um, it has a priority on price, right? It almost disregards time, so to speak, right? So, you know, our traditional charts, we have time and then we have price, right? So, yeah, we have time, we have price, you know, we've got a number of uh, time frames, you know, the one hour, four hour charts, right? Um, Renko charts, in some, on some level, they only care about the price. Right, the little blocks that you look at price, you know, that's the only thing they care about. So they don't really care about that much about time, right? Um, Annabelle will be showing you how you can play around the settings later, especially when you try to load Renko charts on on MT4, right? It can be a little bit tricky to load, right? And of course, when you're applying it across different uh, instruments, like um, you you do need to tweak it around a bit if you're applying it to forex, to commodities, to indices, to cryptocurrencies, right? Uh, Renko charts, the way they behave, um, especially the way blocks behave, are slightly different, right? So she'll be showing you how to do that later. 
Hi, Simon. Hi, Yamilu. Nice to see you guys tune in. And Anji, nice to see you tune in too, man. All right. So these are some of the considerations when it comes to Rango charts. All right. Now, um, yes, this link, please um, go check it out. Now, um, one thing that I have been, um, that we usually like to do is to, um, and I haven't been doing enough of, is that what are some of the webinars, you, some of the topics you want us to cover um, in the future, right? Now is the time where you guys can actually send in some of your requests in the, um, in the question section, right? <laughs> and I'll take a look at it, right? So if there are some topics that you'd like me to cover, right, please send it in there. Right, I might not know all of it, but yeah, if for those that we don't know, right, we actually do our little research, uh, in depth research to really see, um, give our professional take on whether if some some of it are absolutely trash, meaning that you know I can go through it and I find that it's, it's not useful, right, and then you know, don't cover it, right, but some of it which are useful, you know, then we can, um, we can share with you how we think that it can be applied in your trading strategy, right. I can see some requests for harmonics already. Very fun. I actually covered harmonics in the past. Um, yeah, I actually covered harmonics in the past. You can come in here. You search for harmonics. I actually covered introduction to harmonics and advanced harmonics. Um, so go check it out, right? Uh, but advanced harmonics is really, really advanced, right? It really breaks down into um, even a little bit of Elliott Wave and Fibonacci on how to do harmonics properly, right? We can cover it again. Right, but probably the in between because we have introduction advanced, we don't really have an intermediate version of it. Right, it really goes from zero to hundred. So maybe, yep, something talking about more traditional forms of harmonics we find. Um, cover price inefficiencies and how institutions cover uh, capture liquidity. Uh, interesting one, Syed. Um, Kanemba on request. Oh, Davos box. Um, yes, Davos box. Genie will be covering it later this month. Right. Very, very interesting uh, trading strategy too, right? Um, I think that's one that we're going to cover, which is Wyckoff, right? So the upcoming ones, we're looking a lot more at trading strategies, right? Let me just show you um, the English webinars, right? So the upcoming one, um, next week, right, we have Risk Management 101, right? Then we have the Wyckoff Method by Jin Dao, right? Then, of course, we have another one, which is the Davos Box Theory, right? These are all trading strategies that have been created by other people. Very, very, um, each of it, um, they cannot be so popular if they did not have some, hold some truth in it, right? I mean, I was looking at um, even the Wyckoff trading method, the concept of consolidation, right? It, you know, it, it, there is a certain logic to it. Once you've learned enough about technical analysis, you can realize that a lot of them borrow, borrow techniques from each other. Like harmonics borrows a lot of it from Elliott Wave. Elliott Wave borrows a lot of it from Fibonacci. Right, all of it kind of you know are all interlinked in some sense, right? Um, what one person calls the Wyckoff method, you know, um, Elliott wave theory calls the consolidation, right? Like the you know the corrective wave. So yeah, you know it's uh, in different ways. Um, like uh, it's very interesting. So what we try to do is we actually try to link them up together, right? To see that hey, you know maybe you are reading from the same book, just that you know they they just translated differently. Okay, yeah, so the Davos, um, go register for these webinars, right? You got Davos Box 1, you know, the Wyckoff. And those of you guys, um, we're, we're going to take a good look at Risk Management 101, right? Go come, uh, uh, if you haven't been through our webinars on Risk Management, right? Especially lot size allocation, how much you should allocate to a trade, what's the, how do you calculate the lot size of a trade? How do you reverse calculate the lot size based on your stop loss distance? Right, go attend, go register for this webinar. So I'm gonna paste the link to you guys. Um, of course, how do I get the link? Yep, uh, go paste the link to you guys. Go check it out. Hey, Danzeri, nice for you. Nice to see you tune in too. Right, uh, nice and not early this time. You're ten minutes late. <laughs> Kidding. Right. Um, okay, Diana's asking, um, do you do analysis on MT4? Well, I don't do my analysis on MT4. Right, MT4 is a little bit hard. It's a little bit it doesn't have as many tools to use as trading view so i actually do my analysis on trading view and then i execute the trades on mt4 right then that's usually how i do it right now okay i cover most of the um most of the key um links that i need to send to you guys the last link that i want to send to you guys is actually um some of you guys might not know especially in the 
right? We have this particular playlist called the trading analysis playlist, right? And yes, it is updated. All right, the trading analysis playlist. I'm pasting it here for you guys, right? So the good thing about the trading analysis playlist is it's different from our live um, live trading. I mean, it's, it's different from our educational session. Educational sessions we focus a lot on teaching, right? And then tomorrow, same time, same place, except on YouTube. Right, we actually jump in and look at um, look at how we can apply in trading. All right, so I'm going to send you the link tomorrow. Tomorrow it will be um, Jin and Jia Ning who will be doing it, uh, doing on the yeah, yeah on this seventh uh, of September. Go check it out tomorrow. Okay, I now yeah, and then the week after yes, um, it will be me and Jin. All right, now let's um let's go into the webinar. All right, some things that I do want to um I do want to cover. Right. First and foremost, of course, the disclaimer. Always remember that everything in this webinar is educational in nature, so nothing should be construed as investment or trading advice. Please do your own little due diligence before you guys trade. All right. And for those of you who are here for the first time, right, um, your host for today, right, will be our dear Annabelle, right. So she's an analyst here at um, Everest Fortune Group. You know, we are the um, finalists for 2019, 2020, 2021 for best FX best equity research you know we work with major financial institutions forecasting where the markets are having hating and we have a special partnership with ic markets where we're bringing guys the good stuff the juicy stuff the stuff that will kind of take a trading to the next level okay now um the agenda for today right these are the four main things right so firstly you know what is the Renko chart right so i'm just going to show you real quickly over here right since we have it open here Right. Oops. The Renko chart. You notice that when you're on Trading View, there are many different kind of charts that you can use. The traditional one that you guys use are usually the candles, right, and the bars, right. Then there are those who use the Heiken Aishi, right. As you can see, the Heiken Aishi applies a, a a layer of differentiation um, to the um, a layer of differentiation to the uh, of interpretation to the candlesticks. And then we have the Renko charts. One very interesting thing about the Renko charts, which I want to show you, okay? Imagine, well, over here, okay? The thing, the amazing thing about Renko charts, and I have to use a drawing tool over here, right? So I'm gonna have my little drawing, right? So you see, let me see if I can actually draw it, yeah. So if I have a line over here, okay? If I have a line over here, Okay, this is a swing high. Okay, a little bit of a swing high over here. Okay, uh, non drawing mode. Now, if I change to bars, you notice it's, the ex it's at the exact same place. Okay, if I change to Heiken Aishi, it's at the exact same place. You notice it's all the same. But if I change to the Renko bars, you notice it's completely different right that level which i circled the highlight and highlighted is very different when it's um placed on Renko bars so among all the different all the different um chart types over here right Renko bars probably is one of the uh, most um different kind of interpretations um to um to charts now it's the the interesting thing about this which i like is that you know this gives you a kind of like a different perspective when it comes to trading you know because sometimes you know if you look at bars you look at candlesticks you know you look at haikan aishi you're all kind of looking at the same interpretation the you know, same chart just as interpreted differently but the nice thing about looking at Renko bars is that you know you kind of completely you know turn 180 degrees and look at it from a completely different lens it can help you really see a lot of different things Right, especially the higher time frame, which is um, why um, why it helps you a lot in the higher time frame. Annabelle will be explaining uh, right after this. But yeah, so for those of you guys who are wondering how you get access to Rango bars, it's not there by default, right? You need to actually go to um, select the drop down and select Rango bars as one of it, right? How it's going to be customized? I will leave that to Annabelle in a bit to show you how it can be customized. Okay. Now, just uh, just a few other things. To take note of, right? Um, yeah, she'll be covering how to interpret the Renko bars, right? How is it different from the candlestick charts? And then when it comes to trading, 
right? Um, what is our perspective? What is our perspective when it comes to trading? You know, do we think it's good? Do we think it's not good, right? Um, or even if we think it's not that great, you know, what? How can you actually use it, right? What are the what are the things that we think are good? You know, the pros and cons, right? There's always the pros and cons when it comes to this kind of, um, especially Renko charts. So I'll be we'll be showing you some ways which we think it can be used pretty well, right? Um, and of course, some warnings that we we'll share with you guys. Okay. Now, um, without further ado, Diana, right? She might be showing herself um, uh, doing a guest appearance pretty soon too, right? So hang tight for that. We'll, we'll let you know. Okay. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna pass the time to um, Annabelle, right? She do um, do have fun, right? Asking all the questions, right? And <laughs> have fun. Hi guys. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about Renko charts. Hi, hi Diana. Hi Bob. Hi Jamilu. Yeah. So today I'm going to talk about Renko charts and uh, this is the agenda that Desmond had just went through. It's going to be slightly more technical, uh, more a lot more technical at the initial part because I have to explain what uh, the Renko chart is to some of you who, who doesn't know or who haven't used it before. So I'll go through some fundamental like uh, basic explanation of what it is, how to interpret it before I move on to the live charts. Okay, so bear with me for those who actually already know how to use it or yeah, who used it before. Okay, <clears throat> so am I sharing the correct screen right now? Because <laughs> previously I know that the screen is not shared correctly. So so ha can everyone see um my chart here? All right. <laughs> Thanks, Desiree. Okay. Okay. Before I move on. Okay. So what is a Renko chart? Right here I have a uh, a summary of what it is. But maybe I can yeah maybe I can go more in depth slightly. So what is Renko chart? This is a type of chart that is developed <clears throat> by the Japanese that's built to that's built using only price movement. So uh, on a Renko chart, right, although you may see all the um, dates at the bottom, it doesn't move that way. Later I'll explain further. So it's a chart developed by Japanese using only price movement rather than both price and standardized time intervals like most charts candlesticks and as well as your Hekaneshi, right? So it is thought to be named after the Japanese word bricks, which is Renga, since the chart looked like a series of bricks, which they are, because uh, they move in a certain manner as well before the bricks are formed. So a new brick is created when the price moves a specific amount, right? So the brick price or some name it as box size can be by pips or by any amount that you want, so it's customizable depending on how volatile or um, how you want to adjust it according to how you analyze the chart as well, right? So each block is positioned at a 45 degree angle up or down. A brick is typically white in color, right? Or green, sorry, a typo error. When it's up or bullish, down brick is colored by black or red. So for the Renko charts, right, um, it's very unique in the sense that all this small, let me get a pen. All this movement here, right, all these bricks, they are the same size depending on how you customize your box size. So usually it can be go, it can be by your uh, ATR or your S standard price range I think set price range yes or the uh, average true range right later I'll explain further on what these two are okay so Renko charts are composed of bricks that are created um, on top or below one another without any wicks uh, just ignore all this so it will move in a certain manner based on your ATR or SPR by a brick up or a brick down, and it has to move in that certain price that you listed, right? Okay. So what I mean by um, average true, average true range is that the true 
true range indicator is taken as the greatest of the following, current high less the current low. So the absolute value of the current high less the previous close and the absolute value of the current low less the previous low. So in summary, the ATR is then a sort of like a, a average, moving average, generally using 14 days. So for ATR, it's, an, it's like an average of uh, 14 periods, depending on what period or time frame you're in. So if it's like a one hour, it'll be a 14, 14 hour period uh, based on that. And if it's four hour, then it'll be 14 periods of the four hour, right? So Renko chart have a time exists, but the time scale is not fixed. Some bricks may take longer to form than others, depending on how long it takes the price to move the required box size. Yeah, I know it's slightly complex, but um, maybe I'll show you on the charts. It might be easier here. Okay. So for a Renko chart, right? Um, let me get a pen. Okay, so each of this brick, right, they will only move up or move down if it's if it fulfills the requirement of the box size. Meaning to say, now my settings for my setting is uh, average true range, uh, fourteen days, right? So it means that. Now we are using the ATR, but if let's say I use the set price range of 10 pips, this box size can be uh, adjustable, meaning say, meaning to say now I do a 10 pips difference, or you can put one pip difference depending on what you really want. So if it's a one pip difference, there will be a lot more um, bricks, which is, I guess, a bit not not so accurate because then your movement will be a lot, right? You want it to be maybe slightly lower, 10 pips, yeah. So you can see uh, more movements, right? Instead of all the small noise, now you can see a bigger picture as a whole, okay? So it's dependable on um, which currency pair as well because for some currency pairs like your USDJPY, you might not want to use one pip. Right, because a one pip move um, on a USDJPY compared to the AUD USD will be vastly different. So the reason for using um, uh, ATR is also because it takes into consideration the volatility of um, the price, the the currency movement. Okay, so my point of bringing you guys here is to show you guys that on the Renko chart how to read it is that the brick will move up or down only based on what you have put on your traditional or your set price range box size. So if your box size is moved by 10 pips, then the box will only move if it hits 10 pips above or if it hits 10 pips below. So it doesn't take, um, time into consideration because it will only move it doesn't mean that um on a four hour every four hour it will move it will only be formed if it moves up by 10 or move down by 10. all right okay that's the explanation that i want to let you guys know uh okay i'll continue okay so Okay, so select a box size that represents the magnitude of the price movement. So depending on which currency pair you are in, you can set it accordingly um, to how you want to read it as well. And then a Renko chart is then constructed by placing a break in the next column once the price has surpassed the top. All right, once it's surpassed here by, let's say, for example, 10 pips or the bottom. So if is 10 pips lower than this bottom, this price, then it will form. If not, the brick won't be there of the previous brick by the box size amount. So it's depending on what size amount you set. Okay, let me read some comments. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit complex, but I try to break it down to make it as easily understandable as possible. 
if time is not accurate, does it still respect the move within the... You can totally ignore the months below because for Branko charts, right, is is they totally ignore this, right? They You won't be needing this. What you can do is, um, let me just go to the, let me show you. So what you can do is if you want to know which day or exactly when or what time it is, you have to hover around it. Because for example, for, okay, let's say for, you give me one sec, you see? So what I'm trying to say is, if you put uh, 10 pips on USDJPY, right, this is what you will see, because it's not big enough a movement, right? It doesn't make sense at all. It is too much, sorry. Maybe we can do a 100. Okay, maybe this is slightly better, or 0.1. <clears throat> much better. So for example, if you are using um on a USDJPY, right? If you want to know exactly when is it, you see for if let's say you put um I, I think we, we shouldn't use this because it's too so, let's try this. Okay. Usually for normal um, currency pair 10, 10, 10 pips movement is good because you still can see um, how your there is still price movement and you can still figure out your um, support and resistance level clearly right if it's too smooth meaning to say if it's using only using like for example one it's too smooth you, you know you can't really capture uh, important key levels so uh, to Desiree, right, you can just ignore uh, whatever there is here because it's not accurate. You have to hover around um, the candle itself because the candle will only be formed, will only be formed if um, move up or move down by that certain brick size amount. If not, it won't, it won't be, it won't be there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So how to interpret the Renko charts? So let's say, for example, um, on a 35 brick size, this is 0.50, okay? So this is 0.50. So if a 35 brick size is chosen, bricks won't form until the price moves by 35 points, right? Like I've mentioned. So there won't be any bricks. They will just ignore whatever time. So if it's four hour, one day, one week, whatever, if that brick doesn't move by 35 points it won't form here so even if it takes a month it will still take that long to form so that is one of the disadvantages of Renko as well right um, and uh, like I said for each brick you can step you can set your own um, how you want to identify it by points by pips by dollars uh, depending on what you're trading commodities indices or effects uh, right so for this uh, example here, right here, right? So they um, point it to this brick here. Price must drop by 35 points from this level here, from the bottom, for a new red brick to form. And then right here, it must, price must rally by 70 points because you're starting from the bottom. So it has to 70 points before a green is formed, okay? So once you get the hang of um, how to interpret and how to read Renko charts, it's quite easy. So now it's more about how you um, set your levels or how you actually can incorporate this to what you're already using. Like for example, your um, um, Fibonacci or your support resistance level, your Bollinger Bands or your moving averages. Okay. <clears throat> so you also notice that um, the time frame on the chart is set to one day, for example. Okay, this, mean that, this means that the new Renko bricks will only form based on the closing price of the day. So if it's set on four hours, it will only form uh, at the closing price of the four hours, if there is even a movement. Okay, so since the previous brick was read at the far left of the chart, the price needs to drop 35 points below the low of the red brick to form another brick. Okay, uh, that was, yeah, this. 
Yeah, I, I think I, I've explained enough of this. Um, okay. Okay. So I think for the interpretation of Franco chart is that simple. Okay, so how is it different from um, candlestick charts? So as you can see here, okay, as you can see here on my left, um, it's the Renko chart and on my right, it will be your typical um, candlestick. So you can see that it's different in the sense that it's not so messy, it's smoother. So some people like it because they can easily identify where's the key resistance level, where is the high, where's the low. Um, it's easier to spot it in in my Renko chart versus my candlesticks chart. Okay. So candlestick chart focus more on the time frame, okay, as well as small price details than Renko chart. So a new candlestick will form at every interval, right? Because it goes by hours or four hours, days, weeks, okay, Reg regardless of how far the price moved. So for example, on a daily candlestick chart, assuming there was at least one transaction, a candle will form on that day showing its high, low, close and price, open price. So Renko charts don't show this at all, right? It will only, it will only show when a, uh, it will only, a new break is only formed when a minimum movement threshold is reached or exceeded. Yeah. So the difference is in a sense that I think for candlesticks is better is better used if you are executing a entry or if you are setting your um, target target profit levels or stop loss levels. It's more accurate in the sense that you can um, see your wicks, right? Because on your Renko chart, you don't have any wicks to help you support. Okay, no doubt it tells you um, what is the low, what is the high, but there's no wicks to tell you exactly at which point, right? Because it can be $68, but then maybe when you go to a candlestick uh, chart, it reflects 68.5, uh, you know, that, that could be quite different uh, in, in the sense that when you want to do your trade entry or when you want to do a uh, stop loss or take profit, right? The levels have to be very accurate. So I guess for candlestick wise, it's better in that sense for you to pinpoint accurately where you want to place it, okay? And uh, previously, previously someone asked what's the difference uh, or rather which one do I prefer? Or I can't remember the question. It's something regarding the comparison of Haken Ishii and uh, the Renko chart. So I put together this. So this is a uh, Renko while this is the... Okay. Hmm. Well, this is the uh, Hika Ishi chart. Wait, uh, give me one second. This might not. Okay, this is fine. Yeah, because it's all stuck in the mid midpoint. Yeah. Okay. So the main difference um between Hika Ishi and and um Franco chart is that, okay, they look slightly similar, right? In the sense that both show a sustained period of up and down boxes that highlights the trend. Because both of these are used in a sense, um, we want to highlight which trend direction it's going, uh, what are the levels and all that. So for these two Hagen Eishi and Renko charts, they both tell us where the trend is going, right? My highs and lows. But, Renko ignores time altogether. So this one has no uh, time included at all. Well, and it's based, um, mainly purely actually based on price action. While the Haken candlestick include not only the price movement for the current period, but also information from the past. Because the formula has to take uh, into consideration my previous candlestick. Okay, Hagen also includes candlestick patterns that Renko does not have. For example, a doji candlestick, like maybe this. 
can tell people that okay hey maybe there's a reversal or maybe the the market is ranging or it's going to change in direction etc okay but for Haken Eshi I have tested it doesn't really conclude it that way even if you see that there's a change in um um the color of all direction of the brick it doesn't mean that it's going to reverse in direction okay it might signal you but most of the time when I tested it, it doesn't exactly show that okay, it's not that accurate. Okay, uh, type Choi, what does the wig indicate? Okay, if you see any wigs on my uh on my Rango charts, uh just ignore it because by right for Rango charts there's not supposed to be any wigs at all. Okay. Okay, so using Rango charts to trade. Okay, so for Rango charts, you could also um identify some channels or um, all this all this chart action or chart um, patterns right so you can sometimes find a rising wedge a bullish channel inverted head and shoulder double top double bottom etc so on a um Renko chart itself if you set it to the correct settings right depending on whether you are using the atr or the set price range as SPR you could actually identify some of the um, chart patterns on it okay to maybe define or fine-tune your trade okay okay so for example um, this is the USDJPY right you can easily see that um, this is a bullish channel later i'll show you guys um the example because okay for example for record charts right uh, ignore this it doesn't mean that it's on these days it could be actually in year 13 for example okay and then this could be today okay it will show you price that are very very far away because remember for Renko, every brick is only formed when it moves a certain um, pips or a certain price so if it doesn't if the price or the market is ranging at that moment there won't be any um, bricks form hence the delay in um, my timing right so imagine uh, a chart that is actually showing you from year one three to year two zero two two in one frame so it's easier to identify this kind of um, pattern on Renko because you will never scroll what seven, uh, seven, nine nine years or even ten years back right to identify a, a, a trend or a channel that is that far away but for Renko it's, it's it's good that it shows you this far okay but the downside is that it might not be as um, up to date right because now we are in 2022, going to 023, but then yet you are showing me a year one three um, chart, right? But it's good in the sense that it shows you a bigger picture, like a, a, a far away price that you will never scroll and you will never create this channel or draw this channel at all, right? Okay, so this is a wedge. Okay, I'll show you some on, um, I'll show you guys how I incorporate my Renko on a live chart. So, using Renko charts to trade, as you can see here, this is the candlestick, this is the Renko. Renko chart highlights support and resistance level that may not be visible on a candlestick or a bar chart. So, for example, um, okay, so these are the levels, right? For a, On a Renko chart, it might be cleaner and clearer to the audience or the client. Right. I know we all have used candlesticks and we are all very familiar with candlesticks. But if you do want to give Renko a chart a shot, you can do it because you can try it because it's cleaner. No doubt when you change the Renko chart to the candlestick chart, it might look a bit messy. But some people are better at capturing all this um uh support and resistance level on this cleaner charts. And some people might be better at using this to enter their trade positions, right? So on a Renko chart versus a candlestick chart, you can clearly see that they capture it 
in a neater manner, right? Compared to this, you see? Right? But if you compare this, it's cleaner in that sense. Right? You can even pull back further. Okay? So when Renko charts continually turn lower or higher near a certain price area, it indicates stronger resistance or support. Right? Okay, so uh, some examples that, um, some readings that I find out is that they use Renko charts to trade a breakout. Okay, which I tried in, in later I'll show you guys some that are accurate and some that are not. Okay, so some traders, they like to use Renko chart to, to trade their breakout. Right? Which you can as well. Sorry, let me read the uh, comments. I am looking at record in trading view and trading view has squeaks in the chart. Okay, I'll show you how to remove it. Okay, so because by right, it's not supposed to have any um, weeks at all. Okay. Oops. Okay, so some advantages and disadvantages of a, a Renko chart. So for, okay, for these advantages, it doesn't reflect much details because you do not know the exact um, price, the high, the low, uh, the open or close. It's just good at identifying your key support and resistance level. Okay, so if the price is ranging, it may be re represented with only a single box, right? Because the price price only move if it fulfill that level or that price that is stated in your SPR. Okay, highs and lows are ignored only closing price use, and it could produce false signals when the color of the bricks changes too early. Okay, sometimes um. May, it may be a red brick actually that is forming, but suddenly it changes into a green brick or a, a white brick. So some people has already taken a position here and it might be too late to change when it, it turns to the correct color. Okay, so advantages is effective in identifying support and resistance like I've shown you is cleaner in that sense. You can identify trends easily and in a wider spectrum, meaning to say, later I'll show you guys because on the chart, right, when you actually plot it, it will go back to a further date because of the movement of the uh, currency pair, right? Because it will only move if it fulfills um, that brick, brick size. Eliminates market noise, meaning to say you have um, no weeks, um, no, no long short weeks or no long wicks, short wicks that is messy or no doji candles that might affect your trading view. Okay, can be used in conjunction with other indicators. Like I've mentioned, you can use it with um, your uh, SMA, you can use it with your Bollinger RSI. Okay, okay now let's move to the charts. One second. Okay, Should, let me try. Um, for Far, Farhan, right? You can click on the symbol. Just click away the wicks. There's not supposed to be any wicks at all because it trades only based on your box size assignment method. Okay. So for those of you who wants to use, I would, I personally prefer ATR because um, it reflects the the volatility or the heartbeat of that currency pair, right? Let me try to um, show you the example of what I mean. Okay, for traditional, meaning the set price range, if you put to one pip, right? If you put to one pip, um, okay, this chart looks nice on a four hour. Okay, uh, let me maneuver it. I'm trying to show you guys an example. Yeah, I think this is what I wanted to share. Okay, so imagine a one pip on a one pip on the uh, GU or any other currency pair. You compare it with one pip on your USDJP, right? Right. The move might be different. 
So for example, Okay, roughly okay, let's say this is a 0 0.0009 okay movement but if you use the exact same setting for your USD JPY the movement is vastly different so the reason why I like to use a um, The reason why I like to use uh, ATR because it will auto calculate for you um, the volatility of that, that currency pair and take into account so you don't have to keep adjusting what is your set price range. You know what I mean? Because for a one pip on a USD JPY versus a GBP USD might be vastly different. So different currency pair, they reflect and act. Uh, very differently. So an ATR is sort of like a default. They help you to calculate all that and take into account the volatility. So it takes into account 14 days um, a prior, 14 days prior period and calculate it automatically for you. So I usually tend to go with the ATR. Okay, I think this is easier for those who are new or who are beginners to this. Okay. Um, Okay, so let me try to show you some examples. Okay, so on a Renko chart, if you versus a um, normal candlestick chart, it's vastly different because right here, if you don't know anything about Renko, right, it's quite similar to your um, beacon, just that this is clearer without any wigs or whatsoever. You can easily identify a uh, a trend or a channel of your support and resistance more easily even if you're a beginner who doesn't know FX at all to spot patterns is easier on a Renko chart right so you can even spot your um, maybe a double top something like this right or spot a um, head and shoulder Okay, so for spotting um, chart patterns, trend lines, support and resistance, I think for Renko chart is very good at. But the only thing that I feel is lacking on the Renko is that I won't use it on its own to execute a trade because, because I feel that um, the time-wise, because you see here, right, this is first offset. On a four hour chart, it will already show you from 2022 to 2018 or even further. See, because the, like I've mentioned many times, the bricks don't form every day. So it only forms when um, it fulfills the uh, set price range. So in one chart like this, on your normal candlestick, it's only probably a couple of weeks. Right, but on your rank code itself, it will reflect to year one seven. Hence, I think it's good to help you identify all the major um, trends, support, resistance level on a bigger time frame because most of the time we won't go to months or weeks or days. I mean, months or weeks to identify all this, especially if it's so far away, right, to your year one seven, one three even. Okay, but this. Franco chart help you to identify identify all this in a single um, picture, right? So it's good in the sense that you will have a reference point to where the previous swing low or swing high is. And it's good that it's cleaner, smoother for you to identify, but not so good because it might not be the best um, tool to identify your um entry levels right so for a 
we have tried to use it um, using incorporated using a Fibonacci as well as a um, um, triangle, right? A descending or ascending triangle. Um, it's good to identify the patterns, but to execute it, we would recommend that you um, zoom in to or change it to your candlestick chart and use it um, maybe side by side so you can know exactly when is the point to enter or when is the point to take profit or put your stop loss. Okay, so for example, um, okay, let's do... Okay, maybe for example, okay. So maybe here, right here for GU, right? I can clearly see that um, this might be a triple bottom here, right? Instead, if you use a candlestick chart, I don't think, okay, maybe you zoom out to the days. Uh, but for some currency pair, it actually zoom back to way further, okay? So for this, uh, on on a Renko chart, if you zoom out even further, it will go back to, oh, that's too far. <laughs> Some might zoom out to maybe 2000, 2013, which I think is okay, it's quite relevant, okay? So in one picture, it will tell you um, many years of different um, price actions, right? So right here, if I look into my four hour, I can see that it might be forming a triple bottom here. As I'll take note of this area here and take a look at your daily chart on the candlestick time frame to maybe execute on a more um, on a more accurate point, right? Instead of executing it on your Renko chart, which might not be that accurate. You see the price difference because of the week. Okay, so I would prefer to execute anything or any positions on my candlestick charts okay so for example um if let's say you want to use your uh, fibonacci right you can use it on you can use it here as well so for example you want to do uh, your projection Okay, for Fibonacci, right, we, we have tried, so we feel that, in our opinion, if you want to use a Fibonacci on a Renko chart, you can, but it has to be very smooth movements because if, for example, this, I think this is quite clean. Yeah, this is quite clean, but sometimes it might be slightly off because of the wicks and all, but in general, on the Renko chart, you still can use your Fibonacci to indicate the levels itself. For example, um, I found an example that is quite good. Uh, give me one sec. Let me try to find it. Is it this? Okay, for example, let me try. For example, okay, maybe I yeah, use pass. Okay, so for example, if you are using this, um, using a Fibonacci retracement tool, right, on a Rango chart, okay, you must be a bit more careful because whatever that you see on a Rango chart, on a candlestick, it might be vastly different because of the uh, difference in price action. Okay, so this is how it looks like on my um, candlestick. This is still okay. So it's still acceptable, but um, my point is if you want to draw a Fibonacci retracement on a Renko chart, it has, to, it has to be smooth like this instead of this. I don't think this is doable because there'll be a lot of space. And especially there's a lot of space on the Renko, on your candlestick, it'll be even messier. So it's invalid. So if you want to do a... Uh, Fibonacci on a Renko, you can just to find where are the resistance 
uh, support or resistance level, I think it's good to be used here. So for example, if if I'm identifying this as my 161, right, I would expect price to come to this level to test before a rebound. Yeah, so I'll identify that level and then I'll come to my candlestick chart to sort of place my more accurate or a more defined um, position. Okay. Yeah. Um, any questions from the floor? Let me know if there's any parts that you don't understand or if you want me to um, explain further on what the Renko chart is. Okay. So for Renko chart itself, um, in my opinion, I feel that it's good to use it as a reference for your normal candlestick or for your normal candlestick um, execution. So it, it can be used as a reference instead of a tool on its own because I feel that Renko itself, it's slightly more... Um, it has its advantages, but I feel that it has more disadvantages, right, compared to um, disadvantages. Compared to advantages, sorry, more disadvantage compared to advantages if you are using this to execute a trick itself. So I would strongly discourage you or any um, traders to use it on its own uh, just to execute a trick. So it, it will be good as a support or as a um, reference, right? If you want to maybe identify a, a, a key support or a key resistance um, level, I think Renko is very, very good at this, okay? But to execute, I don't think it's that great, okay? It's very easily understood. It's very um, easily read or um, used. So uh, please check it out yourself. Let us know if you do have any questions in the next session. Okay. So thank you guys for tuning in. This will be the end of the Renko chart um, session. Okay. Th thanks for uh, being patient. Okay. Let us know if you guys have any questions pertaining to this. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next session. Thank you.